Summary of Phaedrus by Plato Socrates, the philosopher, meets Phaedrus, a young rhetoric student, outside the city walls of Athens. Socrates wants to hear Lysias' speech for himself after hearing that Phaedrus had just come from hearing the famous order Lysias. He convinces Phaedrus, who has Lysias' speech with him, to read it out loud. In his speech to a young man, Lysias makes the case that it's better to be physical with someone who isn't in love with you than with someone who is. Lysias says that one main reason for this is that people who are in love aren't thinking straight, and they act based on forced craziness instead of free will. Lysias also tries to convince his audience that friendship, not love, is the better way to go in the long run when it comes to social benefits. When Phaedrus sees that Socrates doesn't like Lysias' speech, he convinces his friend to give his own speech instead. Even though he doesn't want to, Socrates agrees and makes a speech that is a parody of Lysias. Like Lysias, Socrates talks like a man who wants to get a younger man to sleep with him even though they're not dating. He says that love is a crazy state that happens when desire takes over and makes people lose their sense of right and wrong. This crazy behavior makes people withhold good things from their loved ones out of jealousy. They even avoid philosophy, which is the source of all happiness. Love finally runs out of fuel and dies, leaving both men worse off than they were before. As Socrates finishes his speech and is about to leave, he feels a magical push telling him that his words have upset the gods by calling Eros, the god of love, names. Socrates gives a new speech. He takes a totally different stance by saying it's wrong to turn down a lover's advances because they are crazy. Being crazy when the gods give it to you is a good thing. Love is the best madness of all. Socrates gives a long description of what the soul is in order to support this idea. He uses a figure of speech to compare the soul to a chariot with wings that is pulled by two horses, one noble and the other full of lowly wants. Some souls can control their horses and reach the top of heaven, where they can see eternal truths. But for most, the humble horse pulls them back down to earth. People who remember witnessing a glimpse of endless beauty in a past life are always looking up, which makes normal people think they're crazy. Socrates goes on to say that a soul that is interested in philosophy will work hard to control its bad horse by being self-controlled and remembering the beauty of heaven. After a lot of practice, the lowly horse is finally tamed, and the lover has a passionate relationship with his beloved that is focused on the beauty of thought rather than sex. Someone's soul can only be directed toward heaven in this type of relationship. Because of this, being with someone who loves you is better than being with someone who doesn't. Phaedrus agrees that Socrates' second speech is better than Lysias, but he can't say why. This leads Socrates and Phaedrus to talk about rhetoric and the difference between good and bad speaking. Socrates starts by saying that speech should be about true things, not just things that seem convincing. His next point is that if rhetoric is leading of the soul by means of speech, then a speaker needs to know what the soul is. They look at Lysias' speech together and talk about how he didn't properly identify his subject from the start. Socrates says that a clear meaning is important and is linked to the philosophical method of dialectic, which involves asking questions one at a time to get more information. He carefully divided up the subject of madness in his own speech to help his audience understand his point that love is a good kind of madness. In addition, he makes the case that the soul is essential to the practice of rhetoric. He says that someone who has only learned rhetorical skills cannot claim to be an expert in the art of rhetoric unless they know how to use rhetorical remedies on specific souls in specific situations. Finally, Socrates and Phaedrus talk about how appropriate it is to write speeches. For Socrates, writing is a fairly new and mixed tool because it makes wisdom look better while actually making it less real. This is because writing is quiet and lifeless, it can't answer questions or face challenges. Philosophical dialectic is better because it is tailored to each soul and leads that soul to knowledge through interaction. About the author. Plato's early life and schooling are not well known. He came from a wealthy and powerful wealthy family. Around 404 BCE, when Athens changed to an oligarchy run by rich men, Plato was planning to become a politician. 
Once democracy was back in place in 403 BCE, Plato thought about politics again until 399 BCE, when his master Socrates was accused of being immoral and corrupt and killed. Plato turned away from politics and toward philosophy in response to this egregious show of injustice. He eventually wrote a large body of work that had a big impact on Western thought and gave the world a record of both Plato's philosophical ideas and the historical details of Socrates' important years in Athens. Plato started the Academy, a school of philosophy where Aristotle studied for 20 years. The school was inspired by many important thinkers who were interested in justice, beauty, metaphysics, and equality. After Plato's death in 348 or 347 BCE, Aristotle set up his own school. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.